Hey everyone, Megan here, and today I'm going to be talking about Carney's House Party by Maud Hart Lovelace. This is the first um, non-Betsy book in the Betsy Tacy series, the, the Deep Valley books. So this is a part of the Betsy Tacy read-along hosted by Kate Howe, Life Between Words, and Books I'm Not Reading. So shout out to you ladies. I love your channels and your Instagram and your content. You're all awesome. First things first about this one, I did miss Betsy. It was weird without her, but we still did get to see her a bit in this book along with Joe, which was great. But I still really missed Tacy and Tib. They weren't in it at all, although Betsy talked about them and mentioned them, and I missed them so bad. So at the start of this book, oh, first of all, here is your spoiler warning. There will be spoilers for Carney's House Party as well as for the Betsy Tacy series. They, this book starts out in college at Vassar, where Carney and Isabel, her friend, go. College culture was so weird back then. So one college um, thing that they did back then is that um, they all like sang on the steps. So, so like freshmen and juniors sang on the steps of a certain building every single night and then seniors and, and um, sophomores, so freshmen and juniors, seniors and sophomores, they were like paired as like sister classes and then each evening they would all sing on the, on the steps of the school outside and they just all sing these like college songs about how great their school was and stuff. So it was, that's so weird to me. Another thing is they could never have gentlemen come and visit them. It was like, that was a huge no-no. You had to basically be engaged. At least to stay for supper, you had to be engaged. Another thing is that their gym clothes. They wore their gym clothes, but they basically had to wear dresses over top of their gym clothes. And I, I don't know what that looks like. Like I know what the old fashioned bathing suits look, look like, or bathing costumes as they called them. So it's like, what's the point almost of wearing a gym suit if you're gonna wear a dress over top of it? Like it just sounds so uncomfortable. Another thing is in Vassar they had this whole like um, tradition where um, the prettiest juniors and seniors I think would or maybe just the prettiest girls in general would all carry these huge garlands of daisies but only the prettiest ones would be chosen for that. The rest of them had to do the hard work of picking the daisies and it's like that is just so terrible that it's like yeah you're pretty enough but oh you have to match the height of your partner and it's just like like the, your partner who you stand next to because the daisies have to go on your shoulders so you got to match height with who's next to you and it's just like no not okay that's dumb. So originally when I read this title, House Party, I was didn't really know what a house party was and I thought it was just like, oh yeah, Carney, like the end of the climax of this book is going to be Carney having a bunch of friends over and she's going to host a tea party or something. So it didn't really sound that exciting to me, but a house party is when you have friends over for a month, they're, they're over for a month and they all just like have a sleepover and many parties for a month and I'm like, that sounds like so much fun. I want a house party. <laughs> that would be fun. Now this book in particular, out of all the Betsy Tacy books, has problematic content. Not a ton, but it is in there and it's m more in this one than in, than in the other ones. So they're, they're talking a lot about indigenous peoples in a disrespectful and dismissive way. And like it was a different time, I understand that. It's just hard to read. Not only that, but um, I think the reason why it comes out more strong in this one is because Carney's House Party is kind of a celebration of the Midwest. So a lot of it is um, Carney is bringing her Eastern friend, her friend from the East, Isabel, to the Midwest. And Isabel is evaluating the Midwest. And so um, Maud Hart Lovelace is showing the history of the Midwest and it's kind of romanticizing it and being like, yeah, look at how far the Midwest has come. And it's like, Eek. wasn't a fan of that. I also wasn't really a fan of Isabel. <laughs> um, and Carney has mixed feelings about Isabel. She doesn't really want her to come to the house party. She doesn't really want her to come um, to her home. Um, I think she's afraid of judgment. Isabel is beautiful and she's kind of perfect and she never comes out right away and says what she wants. She kind of maneuvers or manipulates her way into getting what she wants and she doesn't just, she's not like Carney where she's straightforward and just says what she wants. And I appreciate that about Carney. So that kind of is a bit irritating about Isabel. Not only that, but Isabel kind of plays with Carney's younger brother, Hunter. He she. She kind of plays with his emotions and she's like, oh, you know, it'll do him good to fall for an older girl. Meanwhile, Hunter ha already has a girlfriend named Ellen and this is wreaking havoc in Hunter and Ellen's relationship. So that did not make me respect Isabel. 
Now, something that's interesting about this is that the last time we saw Carney, she was like, she was going steady with Larry and they had a really great relationship. They were definitely a couple. He moved away, then they became like pen pals for like four years. They wrote each other every single week. Larry is a good guy and Carney needs to find out if she actually still likes him because they haven't seen each other in four years and Larry needs to find out the same thing and neither of them can move on till they find out how they feel about each other. And like, in the other books, I totally shipped Carney and Larry, but at the start of this one, I was I felt open, just like Carney. I kind of felt open to all right. Let's see, let's see where this goes. I wasn't like Carney's friends, like Betsy and Bonnie and Isabel, where it's like, oh yay, they have to be together. It's gonna be so romantic. It was like, okay, let's see what what happens. And I thought I was gonna be like Betsy and Bonnie and Isabel and be like, they have to be together, but I actually wasn't. So I think Maud Hart Lovelace kind of um, crafted that well. She kind of made your opinion change a little bit. And part of it might have been is that it had been a few books since we saw them together. There were a few other Be Betsy books between that and, and this one. Yeah, it's interesting to hear how Carney doesn't really have any other ambitions besides getting married and having children, whereas Betsy is very ambitious. She wants to be a writer. She wants to do all of that. And they're really, like Betsy and Jill were really Really well matched because Joe wants to be a writer and he's just as excited for Betsy when she when she has success as a writer as when he is. Whereas Carney and Sam, they don't get that. And now I'm doubting that his name is Sam. It is Sam. It is Sam. <laughs> oh my goodness. Carney and Sam are well matched because they don't really care about, you know, the whole art artistic world writing world whereas Betsy and Joe really do they are well matched in that area lastly let's talk about Sam Sam is Carney's new love interest and spoilers she ends up with him I don't really like Sam I didn't really like Isabel and I don't really like Sam Sam is very pushy and he's often quite angry and part of that is that he likes Carney and he's seeing that Carney you know is often with Larry and he's upset about that but still he's often quite rude and pushy especially when he kisses Carney a bunch of times without her consent. Not only that, she like pushes him away and she's angry and she tells him, don't kiss me. And then he still kisses her again. And so that didn't make me like him very much. And what really added to that is that when he proposed to her, he said, you're going to marry me. Like he told her, you're going to marry me. So I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't really like Sam. If I had to choose between Sam and Larry, I would have chosen Larry every time without a doubt. But, I don't know. It seems like Carney and Sam were happy. The real Carney and Sam seems like they were. So good for them. So yeah, I enjoyed this one. I thought it was really fun. I was just the idea of like being with your friends and having like one big long sleepover, one big long party with them for a month. I was like, yes, that was fun. I really enjoyed that. So it'll be interesting to see um, the last two Deep Valley books that we haven't read yet next month is Emily, Emily of Deep Valley. And then the next one after that is Winona's P Pony Cart. So I'm really excited for those two as well. But it was just fun getting to revisit Carney and, and the rest of the gang of the crowd. So yeah, anyways, well, until next time, may you all be filled with peace, hope, love, and joy. So take care, everyone. Bye.